Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2017. Brought to you by Informatica. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live here in San Francisco for Informatica World 2017. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of the event happening in conference, uh, customer conference, industry conference, Informatica, Informatica World 2017. I'm John Furth, my co-host Peter Burris, general manager of Wikibon Research at wikibon.com. Our next guest is Jerry Held, who's a board member of Informatica Industry, veteran on multiple boards, CUBE alumni, third time back on theCUBE. Great to see you, Jerry, thanks for joining us today. Great to be back. So you're, I mentioned you're an industry vet, which means you have a lot of experience. You've seen many waves of innovation. You've seen cycles up and down. You've seen many of the movies many times. Right now, people are more concerned about digital transformation than I've ever seen before. I mean, it just won't go away. Business transformation, the impact now with cloud, data, social, mobile, it really is causing a lot of movement into a whole new modern era, if you will, another wave. Yep. So, <laughs> what wave is it? And because is it public cloud, is it private cloud, true private cloud, is it hybrid? Certainly hybrid cloud is dominating. What's your thoughts and reaction to the, the waves or wave that's happening? Yeah, well, the thing I've seen about waves, I've been in the business for about five decades now, and I've seen a lot of waves over time. When a wave comes along, the new technology, my first wave that I was really heavily involved was when relational databases came along. Wow, great wave, great technology. Everything will be relational in a few years. No, it's not going to be. It's going to take a long time for that to happen, no matter how good the technology is. The wave to the internet, client server, all those waves took a long time. And some of them are waves that are just little ripples, not big waves. They or at the time, they might have seemed they big. They may have seemed great. Someone has never seen a wave before, that looks like a wave. Hey, right? object <laughs> databases, they're going to be great. Well, they were good for some things, but they weren't great. T take Hadoop. Hadoop is a pretty interesting technology. It was going to replace all the relational database. Not going to happen. Important component, important technology, but it was a big ripple, but not the wave that replaced everything. So when you look at data now, data has mi is migrating to the cloud. A lot of data is going to the cloud but there's a ton of data that's on-prem. There's a ton of data in a lot of places. And I think that the biggest thing right now that people have to be focused on is the word hybrid. For the next multiple decades, we're going to be in a hybrid data world. And if you think it's all going to be in the cloud, you're mistaken. Maybe if you're a little company, you can run all in the cloud. But if you're a big enterprise, you're going to have to deal with data on-prem in the cloud, and the cloud isn't one thing. You're going to have data in one cloud, another cloud, a SaaS cloud, another SaaS cloud you're going to have data hosted in a lot of different places. So the hybrid nature of data and dealing with data in more places than ever before is becoming a huge issue. It's great to have you on seeing multiple waves. We're, I think I'm in my 30th year, third decade in the waves, but here's an interesting point I want to get your reaction to. We were talking the other day, Peter and I, when we were at Dell EMC World, we were talking about uh, the internet, when the internet came. What's your internet strategy? Well, it turns out the internet had a bubble, but it burst, but it was big, a big burst. But actually the things that were overvalued actually ended up happening later, to your point. So they materialized along a different time frame than expectations. But at the time it was internet strategy. Now we hear, what's your cloud strategy? So everyone in the press uh, and, and out in the world is saying, what's your cloud strategy? So to your point, you could, if you believe that what you're saying is true, hybrid's a longer journey, it's not about having a cloud strategy, <laughs> per se. It's not like the strategy, it's everywhere. So what's well, your thoughts on, on that concept? Yeah, well, don't get me wrong. Cloud is extremely important. A huge amount is going to the cloud. The cloud is going to be a tidal wave. If not a, a ripple or a wave, it's a tidal wave. But it has to be placed in context of where is all that data. And that's what Informatica really plays a big part, is you need to have data that's in multiple places. You have to be able to move it and manage it and it's becoming a bigger and bigger challenge. Now it's interesting, you know, I'm on a bunch of boards and one of the other boards I'm on is, is NetApp. NetApp plays a role at the, at the storage layer and the data management services layer. And if you think about what customers have been concerned about for decades is large vendors having vendor lock-in, whether it was IBM in the olden days or whether it was the Oracle stack or the yeah. SAP stack they were locked into, they were concerned about vendor lock-in. In the day of the cloud, they're concerned about what if I put all my data on Amazon? Am I stuck or Azure or whatever? And so they're looking for a hybrid way 
to have some insurance policy. NetApp has this interesting thing where you can put NetApp storage on something like Equinix uh, Colo facility close to the cloud, own your petabytes of storage, have it processed by, say, Amazon, use all that compute, all the facilities, all the software. But if you need to, shift without moving your data and move over to Azure for some of your computing. Mm -hmm. And with a software layer that makes it all transparent. So you could have the on -tap, their ONTAP software running on top of AWS or on top of NetApp hardware and span these multiple on-prem and cloud environments. That's an example. How should customers think about this lock-in spec? Because well, I can appreciate your comments because back in the old days, you got to have a proprietary, sustainable moat or whatever. <laughs> you know, you go to business school, you learn these concepts, you have a sustainable competitive advantage. That was usually some proprietary software. Um, but now with open source, you can have differentiation as a lock-in, but it still can be open with choice. So, What's your thoughts now in this new modern era of how to be a supplier to customers? How can customers understand what lock-in is versus value differentiation? Well, it's always been the case that if you're willing to use proprietary features of a vendor, whether you're using an open standard like SQL, you can maybe get a little bit better performance, but then you're going to trade that off for now it's harder to move. So take for instance Amazon, which has a phenomenal product and they have a good database product now in Redshift. But Redshift is Amazon, so if you're going to stick with Redshift, you're on Amazon. Another uh, board that I'm on is a startup called MemSQL. They're doing super high performance database, and if you're interested in real time super high performance, you know, they'll run on Amazon or Azure, they'll run on on-prem and whatever. So you, you get the choice of multiple platforms. Whereas if you pick Oracle, for instance, who makes a phenomenal product, you're going to get tied into that, and there's trade-offs. You want those advantages because they have unique features. How does that trade off to so your buyer ability? beware, basically, it's at this absolutely point. absolutely buyer beware. Yeah. But it's, there's, also, there's also, Jerry, a, uh, an increasing understanding that there is a natural relationship between the characteristics of your data and how you're going to manage that data because of these issues of proximity. Latency's a real feature. Bandwidth is a real feature. Geofencing and regulations are a real feature. So as we think about, in the informatica world, as we think about an increasing emphasis on data management, where we're managing data as an asset, how is this relationship between data, strategic business, and knowledge about the data, and where to put it in this context of hybrid, starting to evolve? Well, that's probably the biggest news out of the conference here today. If you had to pick one thing uh, to focus on that's coming out of Informatica World this year, it's a, it's a lady named Claire. And it was just announced <laughs> a few minutes ago here, and it's all about metadata management. Now, if you think about your CFO, and you, went, you walk into the CFO of any company, you say, where are your financial assets? Tell me where all the money is, tell me where all the assets are. They'll tell you down to the penny where everything is. They know where all the financial assets are. Go into your chief data officer and ask the same question. Where's all your data? Not just all your on-prem data, but all the data you use in the cloud, all the data. Who's using it? Who has access to it? I will bet you any amount of money they don't know. They might know some of it, but they don't know. This to me is the single biggest challenge facing uh, enterprises today. They're using all these great te technologies. What, whatever you like, whether it's Hadoop or this or that, they're all great technologies. But the biggest risk is this data asset, which we all talk about is the thing that's leading to digital yeah. transformation. How do you manage that? It's how do you know what it is? It's the basis of digital transformation. It's the, the basis. But how can you have something that's so, so valuable and you don't know where it is? So yeah. what Informatic is doing and stepping up to is providing we're sort of the Switzerland of data. We're not dealing with anybody's stack. You get data from Oracle or SAP or from what, your app or wherever, on the cloud, on-prem, from structured, unstructured, whatever. The metadata is all coming together into this thing called Claire, which is not only metadata, but AI applied on top of it, and giving you all of the insights you need to manage all of that data. It is a major, major breakthrough. So describe Claire a little bit. Is Claire a, uh, an artificial intelligence system, machine learning system? What are some of the technical attributes of it? And specifically, it's helping a business track, uh, understand, find patterns in metadata. 
Give us a little bit more visibility. Well, there's quite a bit to it, and I'm sure you'll have guests and I'll dive in even, even deeper. But the basic concept is to collect metadata from every place. Now, Informatica already ha touches a lot sure. of the data in the enterprise, so we already see a lot of the, the description of data. We have the metadata that describes all the things that Informatica touches, so collect all of that. But then, there's metadata that comes in from competitor systems that do data integration, collect all of that. There's metadata that describes all the databases that we don't touch, collect all of that. There's metadata that describes email and unstructured data, collect all of that. Bring it together in a way that you now know the description of and the location of all this data. That's the first step. Then, you have to start correlating that, and here's where the AI and the machine intelligence comes in. Customer information there, customer information there. Maybe you have an MDM system which has a master data version of it, but then you have other customer data that hasn't been brought into that. Start bringing it all together so you now have a view of where it all is. Claire is an enabler, the foundation for a lot of technologies. Nobody's going to buy Claire because they want to manage metadata. Metadata is not a problem. Metadata is the solution and the foundation of a problem. So you have a governance issue. To solve your governance problem, you need to know where all your data is. You have a security issue. Secure it, secure it source is a technology which lets you look around and know who accesses all your data. You have an analytics issue. You're an analyst and you want to ask questions about your customers and that yes, you have some of the data, but new data is coming in all the time. When you sit down, you're typically only dealing with the data at hand. This changes the dynamic of the interface to data. I mean, quoting from the keynote, Claire puts AI at the center of the data management uh, world, Amit Walia mentioned. But we're talking about an Alexa kind of model where the interface to data is being multi-touched now. It's not you know, the one department dealing with it in the old ways. You guys are looking at it as a horizontally scalable layer, but also access method to whichever user, whether it could be <laughs> AI software or analyst. Is that, am I getting that right? Yeah, it's, it's sort of the Google of enterprise data so that you can ask a question and say, I'm, I'm really interested in doing a broader look at customers for this particular marketing exercise. And I've, I know all this data, but I'd like to now see if I can get information from some of our social media systems, and I don't know where that is. You make a query and all of a sudden, Claire can help you find out where that data is, bring it in, and link it in to your analytics. So Claire's really creating metadata about metadata by identifying linkages, relationships amongst the data, it's amongst data and metadata and uses, and presenting that as a way to facilitate the discovery, uh, processing, and, and utilization of data sets through the metadata. Exactly, and it's going to enable every single product that Informatica provides, yeah. so they all come together in one unified description of the enterprise data, wherever it is, on-prem, in the cloud, on any other cloud, on a SaaS system. Independent but location. But Jerry, you also said something really important. You said we don't have a metadata problem, but the reality is that historically, it has been very expensive to maintain metadata. And so Claire, I presume, will also help identify where things may be aging a little bit wrong, where, where uh, descriptions may be a little bit off, so it might help the administrator of all this start to pinpoint where they can actually upgrade and enhance the quality of the data in some places. Absolutely, but I think the mistake that's made, metadata data has been around for a long time, metadata yeah. management system, people have tried it forever. The, the problem is, if you just try to go out and sell metadata management, people don't say, oh, I have a metadata management right, problem right, today. Right. They have business problems. Yeah, they got to apply what, it. What it is, is it's the enabler to solve these problems. It's yeah. the enabler to do yeah. way better data governance, way better data security, way better analytics. Without, but my point is without. And it's sort of, it's underneath, it's the enabler. But without, in, without adding new, an enormous new and onerous administrative costs on data. Right, and that's why the, where the machine intelligence, because yeah. you're talking about a huge amount of data and growing it, as we know, at yeah. amazing rates. We hear terms like data it, hygiene, managing, I mean data is strategic. You know, you know us, we love data. We think the data 3.0 enabler model absolutely is the right path, 100%. In fact, we should have our own cube, and they have Claire, we got to get a name for the cube data set. <laughs> uh, Jerry, just to change gears, I know we got to wrap up, but I want to get your thoughts, because this is important to, to our, us and our audiences uh, with Informatica. We've been chronicalizing the, the, the journey over the past few years. Uh, going private, great move. You've been on the board for eight years. Share your perspective and, and give us the 
the transformation of the company itself, also the new branding, new CMO, you see in a lot of brand building uh, exercises going on. Always had good product shops. But take us through the journey real quick on where the company has come from and where it's going. Yeah, well it's been a, a great ride. I've been involved for quite a while now. It's always been a company with phenomenal technology. I think it's always been rated in the top right corner of all of the uh, magic quadrants. But it's, um, it's in need of a transformation, just like a lot of other companies. Uh, you know, if you look at Informatica, both a, from a business model perspective, we were an on-prem enterprise software company. We sold so software with a license model. The world is changing. We had to move from license to subscription. We had to move from on-prem to on-prem and cloud with cloud first. There were a lot of transformations. They're not that easy to do as a public company. And so the idea of going private actually was a wonderful thing because the changes that we had to make were pretty substantial. And if we had to report all the financials, we would do them much more slowly. It would have been, you're more agile as a private company. 2016 was a massive year of change. We changed all sorts of stuff and we could do it in the private privacy of being <laughs> private. No 90 day shot and, clock. <laughs> and we've made rapid progress. The other thing is we were perceived as sort of a legacy ETL company, data integration ETL company, when in fact we were putting out all these new products. We needed a new image too. We were just unbelievably fortunate to hire Sally. She's just off the charts. This is Sally Jenkins. Sally Jenkins, she's been with us for only four months, is transforming yeah. the image of the company, as you can see all around here. Yeah. Absolutely outstanding job. We needed to have this company be the innovative leader, seen as the leader in cloud, which we are, seen as a, an innovator on a lot of fronts, and that's all coming out. And Moving from a, an important uh, partner of companies to a strategic partner. And let me just give you this one last thought. I've been talking about this for quite a while, but if you go back, you guys have known Informatica for a long time. Informatica was sort of known as the data plumber, right? We did all of that. In a particular subset of applications. In, in a lot of places, we were the guys that moved the data around underneath, very yeah, important, yeah. great products, data plumber. With Claire, what we're doing is we're going to the heart of a, a company's strategic, most strategic asset data. And we're sitting above all those other systems. So if you think about all these great products from Oracle, SAP, Microsoft, all of the things from the SaaS providers and Salesforce and Workday, all of the other data on-prem and cloud. What Claire does and with the, the metadata management is sit above all of that. And we've gone from being a data plumber to a heart surgeon. It's yeah. still plumbing, but it's much, much more important plumbing. And that's the transition to becoming a strategic vendor where what we're going to be providing for our customers is maybe the most important part of managing their most important asset. And that's a massive transformation. Jerry Held, board member of Informatica, again, back on theCUBE, sharing his amazing insight as a board member. You have good visibility on the thing. I, we agree, the data is the heartbeat of the organization has a competitive advantage and also resource. It's the new oil, it's the new gold, whatever metaphor. It's a big wave with the cloud. Thanks for sharing your insight. Really appreciate you coming back on theCUBE and, and uh, sharing your uh, awesome data with us. We're here bringing the data here to you, real time at Informatica World. I'm John Furrier with Peter Burr. Stay with us for more live coverage after this short break.